So welcome to the Jazz Workbook, and uh, the subject today is visualize. Visualize the shape of melodies, okay? And I'm not going to sh- have you do melodies I make up. I want to learn from the masters of improvising, as in Dexter Gordon. So I picked the blues chord progression because it's only 12 bars long. So in order to improvise, I have to have a vocabulary. What is vocabulary? That means like phrases. Michel Petrucciani in the interview uh, said that, you know, well, I, t- I want to develop my own sound, so I didn't, I didn't use quotes from Bill Evans or quotes from McCoy Tyner. So quotes would mean another word for licks, if you will. So I want to learn from Dexter Gordon, so I picked this solo that's, you know, clearly makes the sound of the chords. And I want to play it. I want to sing it. So when you sing, that's air training. Okay, so unless... Unless you're born so kind of a genius and everything you hear, you can remember and you can play right back like uh, Joe Alexander, you need to visualize. That is the only way to learn. And then you sing what you visualize. And as you see the testimony from one of my students at Middlebury College who had never taken a solo before, he was able to play some of these solos in you know, several different keys without really practicing as he would do them on his instrument. So, so no, normally, when I would do this, all I need is my computer. I don't need all this stuff, but, you know, for the demonstration, I'm going to So it. Um, the first step is I, I want to put the song, in this case, it's Dexter Gordon's solo from the album Swiss Nights. And I'm just going to drag it into what's, what's called the Amazing Slowdowner, which is necessary. So you just drag it in there, and then I line it up with 116 to 127, which is one chorus that he plays, okay? And so now I'm gonna play it, and I'm gonna listen to it. I'm gonna slow it down. So I can do that, and I can loop it. Even slower. So the next time it comes around, I'm gonna play it. Oh. Okay, so now I'll play without. So I can play it without the music because I've listened to it a million times and I played it, which you would do. And now, so the, the key thing now is this is going to be my visualization aid. This little graph that I have invented, which is the shape of the melody. Okay. So if I were to do this in, say, the key of A flat, well, the one chord would be an A flat chord, and the four chord would be D flat. And then that would be A flat. And then the four chord would be D flat. And then the three in A flat would be A flat, B flat. So C is the three minor. And of course, flat three would be C. Flat three is B minor. And then the two chord in A flat is going to be B flat minor seven. And the five chord is E flat seven. And the one chord is A flat. So. Obviously, it helps if you know the scales. A flat's one, B flat's two, C's three, D flat's four, E flat's five, F would be six, seven would would be G, uh, and A flat would be one. So this is the one chord, the four chord, the one chord, four chord, three minus, so A flat, B flat, C, just simple math, A, B, C. Flat C, it becomes B. So now I write in my notes. So A flat is going to be 1, E flat is 5, C 
and then six would be F. And then two on D flat would be E flat, obviously. And then sharp four would be G. And then this would be B flat. So if I wrote in the wrong note, say, now I'd hear it's wrong, but now I'd know why it's wrong, as opposed to playing by ear. So I could also think of this as, it's actually kind of a quote of almost like being left. Da, da. Okay, so anyways, you get that. So now I'm going over to here, and now he's going to play seven. So this is A flat, B flat, A flat. Now the seven, because it's dominant, is actually G flat. So it's flat. And then, then A flat is one, G flat again, six is an A flat is F, seven is the seven again, G flat. F. The 5 is E flat, 6 is F, E flat, and now 4 in A flat, A flat, B flat, C, D is flat, so that's the 4, and this is E flat is 5, and 3 is C. All right, so I've got. And then I go to the 2. So now. So I'm I'm visualizing the shape of that and I'm and I'm singing da 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 four five three because four is a note that it's in the scale but it's not a note you can land on it's called a void note so I hear him and so I go to the 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 um, the four chord, so five is A flat. This is B flat is six. Now this is dominant two, so it's gonna be B natural. And then eight obviously is the same as one, is D flat, and two is E flat. And so seven is B, eight is D flat, and nine is E flat, okay? And then seven again is B, and then five is A flat. So if I were to play the wrong seven, I would hear it, and then I would change it, okay? So I'm not playing by ear, I'm playing by mind. So I'm, th I'm thinking and hearing the notes before I play them. Because in order to have vocabulary, I have to be able to hear all these sounds. So if I want to play a seven, I know what it sounds like, okay? And I'm learning this vocabulary from Dexter Gordon. So, you know, that's kind of cool. So the third note in A flat is C. So here's another note. So I'm going to play a D, F, G. So I might play a D flat by my... You know, so I, so I would do that. This is E flat, F, G. And now half step below this. So the fifth note is G. So half step below that is F sharp and the three of B would be D, okay? And so now I go to the two, and the two, five, one is the ninth, tenth bar of blues. That's the cadence. And the cadence is a series of chords that leads to a resting point. And this is the infamous, you've heard about the two, five, one. You practice your two, five, ones in every key, whatever, you know? But if you practice them, well, how do you practice them? I want to practice them in the context of a real solo and a real chord progression. I don't want some guy writing out 8,002 phylics and saying, like, you just go practice it and you'll be good. No, I want to learn from the master just like everyone else. Michelle Petrucciani, who, uh, by the, in this interview, and it's actually an album called Interview with Michelle Petrucciani, who is a great piano player from France, he said that by, before he was eight years old, he knew 15 transcriptions by Wes Montgomery. And he could play all of them. Like, so he doesn't need this. Because he obviously has superior talent to remember whatever he hears. And he, so he has his own system for working that out. The rest of us, this is the only way to learn to improvise. There's no other way. You have to imitate. But how do you imitate? Anyway, so now with the five chords. So the fifth of B flat is F. And one, obviously, is B flat. Two is after B flat comes C. Now the D flat is the third. So, so five would be F, and seven would be A flat. So again, also keep in mind that 
the third in the seven are what we call guide tones. In other words, they determine the quality of the chords, the major, minor, dominant, major seven. Okay, so again, so the three on the E flat now is G, two is F. Now it says half step below approach notes, so a half step below F would be E natural to F. And then six, which would be C, and six is also 13. And one is E flat, and there's A flat. So now I have my solo in A flat. So I could kind of hear changes in that. That's the idea, is that he's making the sound of, it's just an arpeggio. This is the Mixolydian scale, okay, which is... Okay, and then over here, it starts five, six, seven, eight, nine, so now... I kind of hear the sound of a ninth chord. And then this is a little sequential melody. So here I hear that melodic, I hear that melodic uh, cadence. So I'm, I can remember that solo because I can sing it as well as think it. Okay, so now we're going to move on and... Uh, I'm going to show you what to do with this slowdown here. I go to Preferences, Controls, and I'm going to make it go up a half step each time for 12 keys. All right, so this would be a pretty big test. I mean, I wouldn't do this until I had written this out in every key. But I just want to show you how that would benefit us. So I'm going to back this up a little bit, and hopefully it will work. the next key. So you see how the slow downer is an incredibly useful educational tool. Now, you know, you might not want to do it in other keys right off the bat. You want to do it in this key and then you write it out. And as you go through, so in the next key I'd go to A and I'd write it out. I, you know, after I finish this, you know, I'm going to make multiple copies of it. I throw it away. And then I do it in the key of A. And eventually I could So I go to A. Etc. Etc. Okay, so, but I'm visualizing that the shape of the melody. So when you sing, that's ear training. If you don't sing, you're not training your ear. You know, if you're Michelle Petrucciani, he never took an ear training course, but obviously he's, you know, he's probably a genius. That everything he hears, he remembers. The rest of us, the only way to make your ear better is to use your mind to tell it, have it sing stuff, but have it know what it's singing. D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D
uh, the key is I'm visualizing it. And I can practice on my way to class. And I can just pick a different key each day. I don't even have to touch my horn because I'm trying to learn to visualize because when, when you're improvising, you're actually visualizing and hearing what you're going to play as you play it, which sounds pretty darn difficult. And that, that it is, okay? Because to improvise, the definition of improvise is to compose and play simultaneously, okay? So this is, you know, people never know what to practice. So I'm going to learn from Dexter Gordon. I'm going to understand the vocabulary he used. And, you know, I can just play it, I can just play it in two or three keys if I don't feel like doing all 12 keys. If you think about blues, for, for, for alto, most blues are written in B flat concert, which would be G, F concert, which would be D, and then uh, some are written in E flat, which would be C. So three, that's the least I'd want to do is the minimum of three. So again, the idea with this is after I finish it, I throw it away. Because I'm not reading, I'm visualizing because I, I understand the math behind the solo. And like I said, this is, again, repeating, this is an arpeggio, okay? This is the Mixolydian scale, okay? So I don't know if you know what the Mixolydian scale is, but it's the scale that starts in the fifth degree of a major scale. So it's a scale within a scale. So if I said G7 Mixolydian, that would be G is a fifth note of C. So G7 Mixolydian would have no sharps and no flats therefore producing a major chord with a flat seven. Okay, I don't want you to tell me that you take the G major seven and flat to seven, because that's not, that's telling me the difference between major seven and dominant seven. Dominant, by the way, is the same as mixolydian. So there's a mixolydian scale. You know, I could decide like, okay, well, now that you explain that to me, I get it. So... <laughs> And I could go, let's say I did it in D. Or C. So now, so now I could do, if I wanted to, I could say, well, today I'm, I'm going to play all 12 mixed leading scales. Just an excerpt of that, okay? And then another day you could say like, like kind of like that 2-5 line that he plays, which, which in the key of G was... And if I did it in D, the two chord would be E. And that would be the third of the A set. So see, now I'm kind of hearing it almost as fast as I can think of it, okay? So this is the first step in being able to teach yourself to improvise, which is to learn the vocabulary that the masters use. Not some exercise book that somebody wrote, but actually the masters, okay? Michelle Petrucciani learned to play piano by listening to Wes Montgomery. Cannonball Adderley learned a lot about jazz by listening to Charlie Parker. You know, Coltrane, Sonny Rollins, they learn a lot from Dexter. It goes on and on and on. That's, that's how jazz evolves, okay? So if you can't visualize, you can't go up to the next level, okay? So again, this is something that you can practice without, you know, without your... So I'm visualizing in another key and playing it, okay? Now, Coltrane supposedly did a lot of practicing without his instrument because he would play when he was at home, would play all day long, and the neighbors complained. So uh, visualizing is the key to success, okay? So hopefully this, and of course, this is just one of many solos. I'm going to go on to others, which, you know, this, this one is easier than most, but the next one I'm going to do is uh, two choruses by... Hank Mobley from Prancing, which is uh, from the Miles Davis album, uh, Someday My Prince Will Come. And again, not that difficult to solo, but if I can't remember anything, what do I have to draw on? Okay, so that's the goal. I'm going to remember these solos to learn. I'm not remembering them because I want to quote these solos in my solo. Anyways, so that's visualizing. First lesson.